I'm going to continue with what we did yesterday, um, developing the design further. I just wanted to show you a video of the site um, so you guys can see, uh, which isn't streaming. Okay, never mind. I'll just do a quick screenshot of it and then bring it into um, bring that into Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah. Let's get rid of this. Why VLC didn't play there. All right, so what we've got today, what we need to do today is um, we need to reduce the size of, this is the spa. Yeah. Uh, this is the spa we got here. Um, and it's on a mountaintop. Um, so, This is the highest point of the mountain. And so as from yesterday, you arrive to here and then you can go through this eco center space and you move along here and this allows you to go to a separate set of suites or go up to the spa. I'm just gonna open up those images quick. So this is yesterday, what we did yesterday, and there's this arrival space. It's the same as we've got over here. All right, let's begin. So the big thing is that these, these suites are too big. Um, they need to be redesigned. The sizes need to be reconfigured um, to match these sizes. So if you look here, at the moment, these um, each of these spas have they've got their own little bathroom section on either side. Um, and then there's also an arrival space, which is the reception space, as well as a cloakroom and a shower. Although it's not showing you, this is what this is. And then this is a storeroom. Um, and I, I've done a couple of the spas in, over, the, over the last couple of months. and. And how they generally work is that you, you generally have two, two, two kind of treatment rooms. Um, and the one is, one treatment room is a double treatment room, so for like couples, so you've got your one bed and other bed. And then inside that you also need a, a basin. And that's so that the, um, the masseuse or the, the therapist can wash her hands um, doing treatment, she needs to change the kind of thing and then change the kind of treatment that she's doing. Or, and they also need like a cupboard storage, so underneath it they need to be able to store products that they will use, towels, um, maybe some cloaks, um, some, some um, robes for the guests. And then you also need a kind of a shower, shower space um, for guests to shower in, um, or bathroom. And that doesn't have to be linked to the spa, so it can be a separate building. Um, and the reason you can separate it is that it can have multiple functions. So, you know, staff could use it if they need to. Um, so this is quite far away from anything. So the, the staff will definitely need to use this bathroom. Um, and also, what what needs to happen is that um, we've got a we've got a, a a pool on the top of the on the top of the um, the mountain. And this pool overlooks the views, a three sixty degree views. I mean, there are plants and trees and things. You can see there's a tree there, there's a tree there. But mainly, it's, it's, it's pretty much got 360 degree views. And the reason this is on top and not a building is because um, there are other lodges around this area that um, you can't um, disturb their view with light pollution. So it has to be, you have to be very um, aware of the light that you're producing so that you really get that bush experience. You know, if you see lights twinkling in the distance, it kind of breaks that um, experience of being completely isolated. And also, if you want to do like stargazing or that kind of thing, light pollution is going to ruin that. Anyway, so. How this works is you've got like we've got these contours that you're moving up through. That's what the stairs are for. Um, we'll have to look at the stairs because if the if the if the lodge is wheelchair friendly, it, the stairs will not be obviously be a solution to that. You can't say that your guest, sorry, you can't go to the spa because you, we've got stairs. So we'll have to relook that, um, and then we'll probably do that when we're on site and kind of analyze it there. Um, 
so when you arrive at the space you've arrived at this you've got um, this first building is basically your arrival space so that has to have someone who's manning a desk pretty much so that's what there's a desk space here and then the, you need a storeroom and generally the storeroom will have um, extra towels, extra robes, um, it'll have cleaning equipment, so if you need to clean the, the spa, it'll have that. And then also, also what's really nice is that if guests come and do their treatments in these spas, they afterwards would like to say, you know, what did you, what kind of product did you use to treat me? And then you can, you know, you can sell the product that you, um, that you used on them, because they've now used it, they've experienced it, so they like the smell of it, they like the feel of it, they actually would like to have take some of that home, maybe as gifts to their friends or family. And so it's always useful to have a kind of retail space inside this arrival area. So when they come in, they can see it. And then when they go to the treatment, they're reminded of it. And when they leave, oh yeah, this is the, the treatment that I, the products that I've got. And then also there, you can also sell branded robes, um, branded towels, basically anything that they use in the spa experience, you can sell as, as part of the experience. Um, and as you can see here, the, the, the actual treatment rooms, so these are, these sizes are the same, are one-to-one, -one, meaning that what, um, actually, I keep drawing the wrong way here, but what this, this is what we have budget for, these sizes. So if I look at this size here, 21 square meters, that's what we can build with. These currently are 40 square meters, so they double what we can actually, we can build. So what, what we need to do is, is, and the other one is 17 squares, but actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make them both 21 squares, um, just because then it's easier um, to use for later on. So as I was going through it, so we've got, you've got the double treatment room, that's the one function that we need to fulfill. We've got the office, which we've gone through now. And then the single treatment room, what is that? So the single treatment room is essentially, as it says, it's, it's, it's got a bed, uh, a massage bed, got a basin and a cupboard and again to wash your hands to store things in and the other thing that it has will have it'll have a, a, a chair um, and potentially also a table with two chairs so it actually is quite it actually has quite a lot of furniture inside it um, and the thing with furniture is if you've got a big piece of furniture let's say you've got a space and you've got one piece of furniture in it it's very easy to actually furnish it. You can just walk around this thing. The circulation is very easy to plan. It's very easy to, to use. As soon as you have more pieces of furniture in it, each furniture piece, and you'll know this already just from living, um, needs a certain amount of space around it to be able to move. Now, the more space that you can overlap, so for example, this is overlapping between this furniture piece and that furniture piece, the more efficient your building becomes or your, your room becomes. So when we've got these different functionalities in it, for example, we need to have a 900 mil gap between the bed and the, sh and, the sh and the shelves. So that needs to be 900. Now, the same gap needs to be for when you're using, when you're using the, the basin or the cupboards. So this person, it'll be one person who services this and one person services this. So this 900 mil gap is double use. Same with, with the front, however, it actually only needs to, probably need to have 750 mils. And that will be single use because it's only the bed that really needs it. So that when, you know, when someone comes stands here and does a treatment on your head, um, that, that, that's what that would be there. So that's an inefficient area. Um, but if we can put a, the massage bed inside that again, then it becomes efficient again. And so we probably need about a 900, or we can probably go to our 750 around the bed. And then we'll need, you know, you probably put a chair there that uses that 750 as well. We'll probably need a bit more than 750. You probably probably need a meter. So we'll add a meter on the side. And this is how you plan actually a room. You kind of start with saying, okay, cool. We need 600 for the cupboards. 600 is a standard size for cupboards. 600 mils. Everything I'm doing here is metric. Um, our country works in metric. Um, so you have 600 mils. Oh, let's actually just start from the side, start afresh. So you've got 600 mils for the cupboard. Then you need 900 mils for circulation, walking space. That's just short of a meter. 
Um, you can go to a meter, but we're trying to be efficient here, so we're going to try and minimize the amount of space that we're wasting. Then we need our bed. Now, I've, massage beds are generally smaller than a normal bed, but if you leave a meter wide and two meters long, then they can specify a range of different beds. So now we've added a meter on the side. We're busy planning out this dimension here. And then on the side, again, we need 900. Then we need to put in the massage bed, I mean, the, the manicure and the pedicure stations. So the table is not very wide, not very deep. It's about a 450 table. That's 450 mils. Um, and, and you'll hear me, I'm just rattling off numbers. That comes with experience, you know, just using understanding products, understanding tables, sizes, that kind of thing. You, you build up a, a, a repertoire for, oh, that probably will be around 450. Um, and, it, and if you work in 150, 150 increments, you generally will, that's generally how things work. Like window sizes work in 150 increments, door size is similar. Actually, no, door sizes aren't similar. Um, cupboards, always 150, so it'd be a 450 cupboard or a 300 cupboard or a 600 cupboard or a 900 cupboard. Um, and a 1.2 cupboard will basically be two 600 cupboards. Um, and so if you work with that kind of module, you, you can kind of plan a lot of things um, and get a very accurate kind of space planning. So what I'm doing now is basically space planning and understanding that the room size works for what I, what I need to put in it. Um, and then I, so I've got the manicure station, that's a 450, and the chair, um, you probably need about a 600 mils for the chair. But then you need to be able to pull the chair out and walk around it. So you actually need quite a lot of space. You probably need about a 1.3 minimum, I think, would be efficient. You probably need a bit more than that. But let's see if it was 1.3 because you've got two sides and you can move it around a bit. So there's a bit of flexibility there. And then the width of it, which is actually what we're interested in, is um, this is probably going to be 900. It'll be less. It'll probably be 750. But let's leave it as 900 so that we've got a bit of space in the room. So let's add that in. Got 900 mils on the width, and a chair. You go by meter and a meter for a chair, and I'm talking about like a quite a comfortable armchair, because if you think of a of a um, a manicure or a, sorry pedicure, you're sitting back, you're relaxing, maybe you've got some good music playing, and then they'll be servicing and treating your feet, and so they've got, and they need to put your feet on something, so they have like a little bolster or something that they put your feet on. Ottoman or something. So it's probably about a meter. It's about it's a meter um, in each di direction for the chair. That's just for the chair. And then you have about 450 again for the the piece in front. So now we're looking at 1.5. Let's make it round it off to 1.5. And then you need someone who can essentially sit here and then treat your feet because you, you're you're lying here. Your legs, your feet are inside this on this thing and you're here and you've got your arms, you know, you're chilling like this. And uh, yeah, so then you you need another space for this person and then you probably need about another 900. So you can see how all of a sudden, just to do pedicures, it's actually a very long space. You need about 2.5. Oh, that seems a bit much. I'll probably make that 750. Um, so we'll make it 2250, I think that's right. Yeah, 2250. Okay, so that's 2250, and that's just for the length of it. Then the width of it is it is a meter, so you can stay within that meter. Now we look at, okay, how do we stick this in here? So we've got this chair, and sorry, the table. Um, got the chair. What I'm looking at now is where does that, so I've got, an, I've got a 900 mil width over here. And the length, oh sorry, let's actually work with the length and to compare that. The length, we've got two meters for the, the bed. And then we've probably got about 750 on the front. And then the back. Now the back, you would probably go for more because if you think of, if you're entering into a room, you can see that. Uh, yeah, you can. Okay. If you're entering into a room, right? Now the front can be le less, 750, but the back, if I'm if I'm entering into this room, I'm standing here and you're standing there, and I want to go to the cupboards, for instance. Let's say you're the the guest and I'm the massage. 
therapist, the masseuse, um, then then you need to be able to walk past me. So you need probably about a 1.5 the back. You can reduce that. So if you think 1.5 is two people walking past each other, a person needs about 900 millimeters around them to be comfortable. Um, but you can reduce that to 750, and that's how you get to 1.5. And the chance of people walking past each other all the time is not very often, so it doesn't have to be super comfortable. It just has to be moderately comfortable. So it's like you're like sliding past each other to get past each other, so you just need enough space to make it comfortable. And generally, masseuses aren't very big, hefty individuals, but the clients or the guests could be, so you need to be able to accommodate that on both sides. So what we've got here at the length is we've got a 750 mil plus the two meters, plus, let's make it uh, 1.5. So that total dimension is 3.5, so it's 4.2, 4250. We'll make it, we can make it 4.2 just to round it off. So the, the length of it, the depth of it is 4.2, or the length, I guess. And then the width of this building, of this, this room, this treatment room, is 600 plus 750 plus one, one meter plus 900. And let's just make it a meter because of the, the width of the, the chair. So what we've got here is two meters, 2.9, plus 600 is 3.5, 4.2, or 2.50. So it's a perfect square. Now, squares are really bad, hard to design. Um, because if you think of furniture you put inside it, if everything was square, it wouldn't be a problem. But because things aren't always square, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So. This is a, our ballpark at the moment, and now as we're putting things inside it, we'll kind of get a better understanding. Because essentially, the biggest concern I have right now is this area here, the, tri the, the pedicure and the manicure stations. And also what we can do, so, so I, you should, you'll see I put the doorway inside of the open gap. So there's an open gap here, this is the 900 width gap. And, that's, and the doorway is 900 width. So, as you're coming in, you're already, so we're, you're reutilizing this space that's next to the bed. Again, we're trying to overlap as much space as we can in terms of circulation so that you minimize the amount of unnecessary space or useless space. Okay, so for this pedicure station, we have, uh, I think we said here, 1.3, 1.3 is 2.6, plus the width of the table, which is 450, so it's 3.1. Yeah, that's fine. We can probably squeeze this down to 1.2. This 3.1 is really is quite a lot. So let's make it so if it's 2.9 meters, millimeters. That means that we still have a 1.3. And as you'll see, that's not enough for this dimension that we've got here. Because remember, we said it's a meter wide and it's 2.25 long. And then also you need to remember how things are being used. So for example, if you're getting a, care, a pedicure, you're not getting a manicure. If you're getting a manicure, you're not getting a ma you're not getting massage on the table. So in, within that space, although you want to make sure that you're not moving things around, there's no reason you can't move things around. Um, if, if for example, we've got a 1.3 meter space, if we put the chair, for instance, uh, maybe like you want them to, the chair to kind of look at the view, the view is out this way, so it's out that way if you're sitting over here. So we're busy designing the space looking out that way. Um, if you put your chair like that, there's not going to be enough space for your therapist to kind of do their thing over here. Um, because this is 2.9. And then the question is, okay, what happens if we turn the chair the table? So let's say we put the table that really gonna work and then we can also here what's 4.2 times 4.2 17 so that's exactly where the single treatment comes from but i think we have to make it bigger i think this is too small um because the worst thing you can do is have a small small space that doesn't feel comfortable like 
it can be small and it feels open, that's not a problem. You're, you, you won't feel claustrophobic. But if you make it really tiny and it's full of lots of furniture and you like, struggle to move around, that's really bad. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a... Oh, I suppose people can use it. Sorry, guys. Can you hear that? Well, let's see if you can. Okay, so then, then the next thing is... Okay, cool, only 20 minutes. All right, sorry, I just want to see how much time we're in. I haven't got the whole Beyond Hurry timer up and running yet. Um, okay, sorry, we're just going to go back into the space planning space here. So now what we've got is we've got to figure out where we're going to put this. Um, this chair. We make this 1.2. We make that 1.2, and we've got a meter. That'll work. That gives us 2.1. And we need 2250. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. So what we'll do rather is we'll make this a bit wider. We'll make this. So it, currently it's 900, we'll make it 1.2. Uh, let me just get rid of this. Okay, so we'll make it 1.2 wide. And then we can put our chair, which is a meter long, and our bolster, which is 450 about. So that means we're encroaching into this space. But remember, this bolster can be moved, so we move it away. We're not using it, so it's not inside this corridor. Your corridor around the the bed, and we can use that to our advantage. So if we make this corridor, let's say we make this a bit wider, let's make it nine hundred. We make that nine hundred. That means that our chair can use this space for both circulation for moving around as well as the masseuse or the therapist sitting here and treating your toenails. Yummy. <laughs> All right, so we've kind of got that. So we need 1.2 plus 900 plus 1.1. Okay, let's just do a cal cal calculation here. So we got uh, 50, no, that's too little. It's not. So 900 plus 900 is 1.8. Plus 1.2 is 3, plus 1, 4 meters, plus 600, 4.6. That's not a bad size. 4.6 by 4.2, perfect. We fit everything in. Yes, it's comfortable. And then you'll ask yourself, well, you've got these very plain walls. So let's just quickly draw this thing up and see what I'm talking about. I'm just drawing a axonometric view. Axonometric is a, a 60 degree angle. So that's 30 degrees. That's 30 degrees. Architects use this quite regularly as a way of getting out of this drawing in perspective. Um, so what we've done, we've got our bed. And it's a quick, also a quick way, a quick exercise. Um, and then got your cupboards over here. Sorry, I'm drawing this quite quickly, so it's a bit messy. Got your basin there. And then here we've got, this is where we've added. We've got our, our chair, table, other chair. This is where you get that. Uh, get rid of this. Then we've got our armchair here. So the armchair does that. Again, I'm just drawing it really quickly. And then you've got your bolster. And then you've got your masseuse. Just kind of there. 
not sure if they sit on their knees and wash your feet in your paddock. I'm sure they've got like a stool that they sit on. And your head is like you're chilling here. And there's a your manicure. How the manicure workstation works is you've got a, a very small table, and then you've got a like a thing that you put your hands on, like a pillow or something, and then they'll you know um, file your nails away and clip them and put false nails on if you want them and then paint them. So it's a it's not it's a very intimate space. You don't need a lot of space to move around and do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's very narrow and small. Um, so again, that's why the space can be quite small. And then your the person will sit here, sit here. And for the massage, you know, and then I was gonna, just going to say is that, so now you, what you've done is um, all of this front area here, we make this glass. So when you walk in, have, and it opens. So you just got view. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you walk in, standing here, you've just got an insane view. But then you also see that, like in a box, a box is a very boring kind of form. We see it all the time, everywhere, all around us. So if you can, if we can create, introduce elements that kind of break that. So maybe, for instance, this back wall, the curved wall, does that. You see how much more interesting that already looks. That architecture. Um, maybe the roof is also curved. These are the kind of elements, the kind of tricks we can use to make the box seem more interesting than it actually is. Um, and the space is also going to be more interesting. And then maybe what you do is if I look in section, if our building is doing that, um, and our roof is doing that, maybe it flies over. So for example, the wall stops short of the roof, and then we have glass above it. Yeah. So these are kind of tricks we can use. And also what's, what's interesting is if you start doing things like this, the space has changed. So it no longer is a box. So if you're inside it, you know, you don't have hard edges anymore above you, for instance. So you're not going to get as struck as hardcore e echoes. Um, and that echoes are very uncomfortable to us. We don't, we don't like echoes. So if you can remove that just by the, changing the building form, you've done a really good job. Um, and if this wall here on this, maybe these side walls can also curve. Um, I used to be a very strong angular architect. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't understand um, curves very well. I, I found that they were superfluous. I don't understand why would you design with them, firstly. Also, it makes things unnecessarily complicated if you, if you just believe that curves are just another way of building the same thing, like a more, less efficient kind of structure. Um, but if you, if you think of who we are as people and that everything around us is curved, that we engage with, everything about us is curved. Uh, you know, that's why Cusum died. <laughs> no, I, I don't know why. Um, just because of that. Um, then, then you realize that it is completely against our nature to be angular and strong and, 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 and rectilinear. And if you want to create spaces that make people happy, you have to remember, keep that in mind. Be cognizant of the fact that we're trying to make people happy in our buildings. We don't want them to become depressed, aggressive maybe. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's the first treatment room. How much time we got here? Okay. Okay, we've still got another three, four minutes. Um, the double treatment room is basically exactly the same, except you don't have all of this extra stuff on the side. So we'll just leave that drawing there. And then so the double treatment room is actually a very simple thing to, to design. Um, you'll have your two beds. In between them, we'll put a, probably put a meter. Um, you'll have a 750 mil or 800 mil on the front. The back will be 1.5 again. The sides will keep at a meter on both sides. Pull this properly. And then we'll still have that basin. Now, when you look at this, you could also put the basin at the back. So I just showed it on the side. 
um, and it might actually be better on the back because that means that the sides can also be glass. Um, and also the thing to remember is that if you if you have floor to ceiling glass, it it kind of breaks the okay. Okay, let's just explore that quick. Let's say you've got a wall. You've got a window inside that wall. The window there. And if you're inside that space, I'm actually just going to draw it as a perspective. So let's say here's, this is your room, and you're looking, you've got your, um, uh, brush this in quick, your room. Right. Now let's say that back wall, um, You'll notice that I'm using a, a very, very um, rich and interesting brush. It's from Bjorn Hurry's set. If you follow him on, inst on stream, you can get his set, you or you can get his um, brush set off his website, I think it is. Very, very nice brush. So let's say you put three windows inside there. Those are your windows. You're going to feel like you're in a room, right? So the focus is still the room, the, the, the wall. It's still all of this, right? But if you were to remove that wall and put glass instead, all of a sudden, your room becomes this enormous experience because your focus, all of these, all of these lines, these lines on the sides here, are taking your eye to the view and in the background you've got mountains and trees and all kinds of wonderful things and look how much better that looks from a spatial point of view you can just see just from this little random crappy sketch that i've done um how much more experiential it feels it it's all about the view so these walls can be made very cheaply you know, you can you don't have to really put anything on them. You don't have to clad them with anything fancy because the focus is the view. And if you can remember what the focus of a space is, of a room is, then you can gear all your attention onto that and you'll be much more efficient in the way you design it. Yeah. And if maybe if that roof does still does some cool forms, it still it can still do that. You know, and you can still have a window on the side. You can see how that is actually all irrelevant because the focus is still that. And and there will be verticals. You'll see you'll you'll put in doors, so there will be vertical aluminium elements kind of do that to kind of frame the view. And maybe they open all the way across, or maybe they stack on the side. So you get that experience that's really open. And then of course you ask yourself, well, we don't need a balustrade. I hate balustrades. They, they just ruin these experiences. But you have to save the world from people falling out of buildings, so we need balustrades. All right, so okay, we've done the, so this is the, um, this double treatment room. So we've got, um, let me just, just finish this off quick before we go. Um, but on the sides, I think we're gonna go, so we've got, uh, we've got three meters. And then we've got, I think, 750 sides will be. Um, so that gives us three meters plus 1.5 is 4.5. It's 4.5 long. In fact, we maybe might go a bit longer. Let's make it five meters. And then the depth is one meter, 1.5 plus two plus 750. That equals, uh, what's that, three, that's three, 350, three and a half, what am I doing? Three and a half, uh, 450. And then this, what we'll do with this, um, we'll pop this out so it doesn't go the whole length, we'll just pop it out. What I mean by pop out is that you look at your building. So that's your building form. We'll create a box that just kind of 
comes out of that. So pretty badly drawn. Doesn't matter, it's all good. Okay, so you're so what you're doing is you're you're basically saving the square meterage of this. The cost of that is being removed, so you're saving that. And that's how you can be efficient in the way you you kind of save space. All right, so uh, we've still got one more, the storeroom and arrival space to design, but we've run out of time. Um, so we'll leave it like that. Thank you very much for, for listening. I hope you've got something out of it, some interest, some intrigue. Um, if there's anything else you want me to talk about or discuss or engage with, uh, just let me know. Drop me a message on the chat. Thank you very much. Have a good day.